Hi everyone, welcome back to season two, episode two of Scale Modeling Weekly. So in this episode, I'm going to talk you through just a couple of projects that I've got coming up that are going to be very, very long term projects, uh, probably starting them end of March and looking to have them complete by the end of uh, October. Uh, so they're in time for the Scale Model World uh, show at Telford. Uh, so there are a couple of um, short run kits that I'll be doing in his Spanish Civil War subjects. They're large twin engine bombers. Um, one, well, one is short run, I guess. Another one is almost short run. It is injection molded and it is, uh, you know, it's a kit. It's not a short run uh, per se, I suppose. But there's a couple of things I need to do to add to it to uh, really bring it up to the level that I'd be happy with. Um, so I hope this is of interest and this is sort of part one of a two part thing because in next week's episode, episode three, we'll be taking a deeper look at some of the pitfalls with short run kits, resin kits and um, also working with resin as well and all the things that come with that. So with short run kits you tend to get resin, photo etch, etc. But there's also full kits in resin as well. So we'll have a look at that talk through some of that process in the next episode. This one's looking at planning your build for a long-term subject, some of the things that go into that, and some of the things to look for if you're trying to choose a kit for a long-term build. So hopefully you enjoy this, and let's get into it. As I just mentioned, we're looking at some of the big projects I've got planned for this year. These aren't probably going to be video builds. <clears throat> I will very much try to take uh, pictures along the way though, so we'll have something. Um, and I thought it would be just very uh, interesting to have a look at the process that I go through when I'm thinking about these big sort of long-term builds and uh, you know, knowing they're not going to be easy as well. Uh, so hopefully this is of interest. So the first one I've got is this um, DO17 EF which is from Hobbycraft. So this is 1 uh, Now as you can see we're almost um, straight in there with uh, decals from the variant I'll be doing which will be the Spanish Civil War one but uh, these are cracked and probably aren't going to be any good whatsoever. But it does give us an idea, so if I want to cut these out, it, you know, it's already measured and it's relatively simple to get those shapes sorted. Um, and there's a number of ways around it, so that's the first thing. Um, and this is obviously a basic kit, because it's quite an old kit. And um, there's some known errors as well, I mean that's the cockpit for instance, so obviously that leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, the glazing isn't great either, it's a little bit heavy. Um, generally the rest of the build's okay, we have got recessed panel lines, fit is not terrible and in 148 we can pretty much with scratch building tart up any areas that, that we want. So that's the one plus and that's the uh, schemes, so we'll be doing one like that, a nice splinter, splinter pattern scheme um, running through there of one of the early bombers used during the um, campaign in Spain with the Condor Legion. So. That's the instructions, let's have a look at the kit. So straight off, um, when, when doing this, I sort of think about the rarity and what's available and I've been hoping for about a year now that um, ICM are going to expand their 148 range of uh, DO17s with an early one. Don't think that's going to happen. Similarly with the HE111 as well, and again I can't see that happening. They've gone back to the H3, uh, but whether they're going to go far enough back to start getting into the early versions, I don't. I don't know. Um, but I've had a word with myself, and even if they do, I'm not going to lose sleep. I'm going to be. I'm going to be okay with it. So. When I'm looking at a sort of, it's not really a donor kit, we are, we're using the kit, but you know, we're going to embellish it. I probably wouldn't start with this kit if it didn't have recessed panel lines, because that would almost be the thing that pushes me over the edge. But thankfully, all of these lines um, are recessed, so that's very good. Looking at reviews, I'm not one to get out a tape measure or anything, but it does seem to be more or less there over the dimensions and it looks like a do 17. Um, it's got the early engines, uh, they do two versions actually but this is the one with the early inline engines. Um, there is one very well known problem to this and thankfully there's a relatively easy fix that is this 
is meant to be flat. The profile of the fuselage is meant to be flat and it kind of kicks up and when you've got it together it really does look like it's meant to be the flying pencil and it's this kit's got the nickname of the flying banana because it kind of slopes up but all you have to do is um, cut a little chunk out just here somewhere um, and flatten out the bottom part fill it join it together and all is well so again not too much of a difficult thing to um, to come across and again we've got recessed panel lines and for the most part the details there and we can we can add something if we want so the basics are there is what I'm trying to get at. You've got the kit, you've got the shape, it's easier than scratch building, so that's not too hard to get to where we want to go. So then we start thinking about the embellishment or any of the major problems it needs fixing. So the major problem with this is the flying banana, which we know we can do just, you know, the old basic modelling skills. We can get those out and um, fix that. I'm not going to worry about opening up the bomb bays or opening up side doors or anything like that. But the glazing uh, is not very good. Um, one, it's extremely thick and um, quite soft on the edges. And it's actually uh, noticeably wrong as well. The profile should be a lot higher. Now, it's, it, you don't really notice until you compare it to something that it's meant to look like. Luckily, this kit has been around a while and there are a few bits for it. So one of the first things I picked up is a vac form canopy set. So we've got the front portion there and the lower portion, the chin. <clears throat> and let's let's whip it out and have a look. So there is a quite a sizable difference here in the height of the two for a start. And there's a sharpness to the uh, vac form one as well, which uh, this is lacking. So you've got very, very sharp angled sides like that which is very good just like it's meant to be whereas this is a bit soft a bit rounded a bit all over the place i know it's hard to see here but you have to take my word for it that there is a definite difference there same with the chin and it's crystal clear so this is the squadron canopy um it's got very sharp framing and all in all it looks very good and it does give you the instructions on how to fix the banana issue so uh, they come in two sets so that's those parts and then we've got the um, upper gun sort of rear facing turret you've got the two types of those and then you've got the notable um, glass nose there as well which uh, has that bit that sticks out as well so it goes kind of under there so it's not going to be easy to fix those but it is going to be doable and um, we know again with time and all that going through it it's going to be very um there's going to be plenty of time to sort it so this is your instructions it's saying it's got a description here of what you're meant to do running down there and then that diagram it just gives you an idea so what you get is this part and that part there and in the other kit we get this bit and that bit so that sorts all of the glass work. So really the, the thing to bear in mind uh, if you're going to think about doing projects like this is to think about one, um, the amount of effort that's going to go into it and you know don't cheat yourself there's going to be a lot of effort that's going to need to go into this. I'm well aware of what kind of project this is going to be and um, I'm up for it so that's good and you need to be because it's going to be a bit of a sort of mojo killer. So that's the first thing, you've got to really want to um, get the end result and that's regardless as if um, a new kit comes out. So I'm going into this knowing that if ICM bring out a whole range of the early ones, that's great, I'll just add them to that, I'll grab a couple of those and carry on building this one. So you need to be prepared for something like that because uh, you can almost guarantee as soon as you start going into a, a project that you've been waiting for forever to come out, it's going to come out. You're just going to have to bite the bullet and go for it. Well, that's the first thing. Secondly, um, I've got a reason for this. I've got a big show at Telford where I've got my own table where this would be a feature model from it. So that's great. That's the sort of thing to push me on. And also um, thinking about obviously how good the kit is. And this as a base kit is great. So the second thing to think about is how far you want to go. So you want to have an idea of the type of model you want to end with. I don't want to go super detailed. It's not going to be uh, going into competition but equally I don't want to build it straight out of the box because it could look a little bit naff so just giving the um, helping out with the glass work with the platform canopies is the first place now there aren't any sort of photo, photo etch or resin sets that are available these days for this kit 
Uh, given the size, we can actually uh, super detail the inside relatively easy. There is an Airwaves, which is the sort of Hanant's produced etch metal, very old school type of etch metal, but it may help. It's only a fiver, so I was thinking I might have a look at that. And also the wheels is something to think about as well. There are resin aftermarket wheels. That will probably be the only embellishments I'd add. And then just uh, probably get the glasswork into the top of the fuselage because that's how it's going to work. I can kind of do that before everything's together. So I might try and get the glasswork in here and then spend quite a bit of time thinking about how much I'm going to see of the inside and then just super detail the areas where you're going to see and just kind of give the idea of, of a little bit of a fuller um, cockpit in there. Then we're on to marking schemes. So given the size of this, uh, it is a good candidate to be painting on your own own masks and marking set. Um, I did, as it was there, uh, grab this set from uh, LF Models. So they do a um, specific set for this. And this is actually 27.1, which is one of the very early uh, uh, DO 17s that were over there. Now, I remember looking at this, and for some reason I wasn't too happy with it. I can't remember what it is. There's a lot of cuts all over it. So what I'll probably do is use some of this and actually cut some of these out as well on the... Um, on the cutting machine on the Cricut. Uh, I'll probably use the Pablo 1 which we've got here which should be no problem at all. Um, obviously the white stripe and the black crosses are, are easy enough to do. The big black circles again are easy enough to do and you know it's not be beyond the realms of possibility of using that. Uh, sorting out that white cross as well although it is um, poking out the side of the black circle there it comes out to about here so it's just something to bear in mind that when you're going to be doing that on the under surface you need to think about how you're going to paint that um, it might be that you would spray the white mask it off and then um, put a circle on there or just spray the black even and then put a circle over that and then spray the blue and then peel it all off as reverse masking and you should have uh, the marking that you got but at least this gives me the sizing that's why i got it just as a sort of template really just makes my life a little bit easier so that's another thing you can think about um something else that has been um a possibility that could be added to this as well is some mg 15s uh which i'm not sure i'm in two minds again because they're gonna be um they're not that big they're only here um, and Edward do a, a resin set of uh, MG15s and I mean given the size of them I might be able to tart those up as they are. So again that's something I'll look at when I'm when I'm closer to it. Um, but really it's it's a great project when I'm in the mood to start I will just have this one on in the background. Um, and I think it's going to be an interesting subject. So that's the first project which hopefully that's been of interest looking at that this is something that you you have to add quite a bit to if i'm honest um but the build should be quite simple it's not a short run kit really this is more of a kind of injection molded kit of an old school way so it might be a bit gappy but for the most part you're hoping that the wings are going to go together for instance and the fuselage is going to go together once you've corrected the shape the next subject might be a little bit different so let's have a look at that one so we had a bit of a uh, sneak peek at this one underneath the uh, DO-17, so if you saw it, you know what it was. This is the 148 Special Hobby Fiat BR-20. This is a pretty much outdated twin-engine bomber uh, that was created by the Italians that, as it came out, it was almost obsolete, really. It didn't really have much of a role. It was kind of designed to go over to Spain... Uh, for what reason we're you know we're, we're never probably going to know what the Italians were hoping to achieve over there the amount they threw at it and for what they got back but that's a different story. This performed very well over there and then uh, was pretty much outdated by if not 1939 it was certainly by 1940 and um, is known for its sort of uh, last hurrah over I believe simply the east of the UK where it was shot down by hurricanes um, with great ease. And that was the M version, so that was the later version. This is this is the slightly earlier one. So uh, there it is. I think that's a fairy former, is it, coming up on, uh, behind it in the tail? So if, if um, that one's catching you, uh, 
you know you've got problems uh, if you're then going to go up against hurricanes and spitfires. But nevertheless, we have a kit. Um, this is one I'm going to do uh, for Spain. Bizarrely, we don't have any Spanish schemes at all um, anywhere aftermarket. I don't know why. It was the main place it was used, but there you go. Um, nevertheless, should be simple enough to uh, do our own markings for that one. Now this, compared to the DO17, is a bit of a different kettle of fish because this is a short run kit and it's a very large short run kit and it may pose a few problems. Um, so being short run we've got resin, which we don't have in the other kit, and this is simply the engines I believe. So uh, two ways you can look at that, I mean that could be problematic but you're going to have to use them so there's no way around it, you're going to have to have a couple of engines. You've got to make them out of resin, so that's one thing you've got to you've got to get over and do. Um, we've got quite a lot more parts in this one as well, so it's, we're hoping it's more detailed. But the fit could be a real problem, and that could be the the one that, that causes us issues here. So you can see the size of it. That's the wingspan. So you're going to have something like that. I can't even get it in the frame, but this is kind of classic airframes vintage. Um, which was all made by Special Hobby, and then um, they've uh, put a version of it out themselves, which is what we've got here. So, yes, we've got a multi-sectioned fuselage, which I never like to see, especially in short-run kits. Uh, so that could be an issue. Well, it, it's going to be an issue, but hopefully not too much of an issue. We've got internal detail here, which is quite nice. So we've got all that bracing down there, uh, some of which we'll see, so we don't need to worry about adding it. Um, you might see a little bit down there, and you might see a little bit back there, and that's about it. So it's nice that that's in there. Again, we've got recessed panel lines and nice fabric texture across the wing and on the ailerons. So that's all good. And we've got nice rivet detail as well around the engine nacelles. Um, clear parts seem to be no problem here as well, and we've got two different chins. Now there is something we've got to pay attention to in this because the chin uh, overlaps and it's very easy to try and sand that down, but it's meant to overlap, so we've got to look out for that. Yes, this is as I feared. Uh, so they could do the M, which has got a different nose, and, and we're doing this version. I forget the designation of this one. Does it say? No, I just com I just made sure I knew which one was in the Battle of Britain, which was the M. So I'm not sure which version this is, but anyway, it's not the M. Um, we've got a butt join there for the nose, so we're going to need to make sure that's sorted straight away. I would think probably in two halves, get it all together in the two halves and then bring the fuselage together as one section with all those um, extra bits added on. That's how I'll be doing it. Again, why have we left that section separate? If you've got the holes, why cut out a section? Who knows? Well, we're not going to worry about the, the whys um, with this. We're just going to we're just going to plow on into it and get it done, I think. It's the only way I can really describe to you. So, the, the, the main thing looking through this, applying the same logic, is I think we're going to need a zoom set from Edward, which is thankfully out there, to give us some seat belts, and probably a masking, a window mask set, and I would hope that would be it. As I say, there is no aftermarket decals, unfortunately, or um, paint schemes, pre-cut ones for this, so we'll have to do that ourselves, but it's not too difficult. And again, the main thing about the BR20 is the mottling camouflage scheme that it has. So it does look relatively straightforward, if I'm honest. Once, once you've got the cockpit and the interior sorted and the fuselage together, it's just a case of sticking the wings on. And I think we're going to have the main problems around the engines. So if we know that going into it, we've got all these resin parts. Again, that's the sort of thing to, to, to know. So if you're going to do that, I know that I need to get ahead of this one. If I want to have this ready for November, I really probably need to be starting it somewhere in April. And um, just doing a little bit here and there all the way through the summer. Uh, there's the marking schemes. This is pretty much the scheme we're going to have. Only we'll have um, black circles, uh, white cross, uh, white fins. Rudders, sorry, with a black cross, and perhaps a couple other things that I might be able to make up from the spares box. 
Um, this is a great kit, to be honest. It, it is about, it's about 45 quid's worth, I think, this. Um, I don't know what I paid for it, not that much. But there's a nice silver scheme there, which would be good if you could pull that off. And we've also got the um, free block pattern camouflage as well that, uh, that the Italians use, which is very attractive. I'm going to do an SM79 in that, that scheme. So there we go, that's what we've got. Very, very interesting. So, not so bad. Again, this being short run, we've got to go about it a different way. So, what I would probably think is to, is like I said, to add a, an Edward Etch set to this. Think about the marking schemes. And I would imagine with the amount of glass work we've got, do I want to bother with all the work that's got to go on? I probably just want to stick some stick some um, masking straight on there. So that's the sort of thing I'm thinking there. Now, what I'd like to know is two things. If any of you who are watching, hopefully you're still enjoying this and it's interesting for me talking through this kit. But um, if any of you have built this kit, I'd love to know in the comments below. And also, what short run kits you've built yourselves. If you've got any, um, you know, if you've got any links to uh, any builds, just post them down below and we'll all have a look, I'm sure. But uh, it would be interesting to see your thoughts on building short run kits, the pitfalls and all the rest of it. So this is kind of a part two video. This is the first part. The next one, I'm gonna talk about what you need to look out for when you're building short run kits, resin kits, and things that aren't obviously just straight out of the box injection molded kits. That's going to make up episode three. So um, hopefully you were able to find some enjoyment from that. And um, I think it's just nice having something where you can talk about kits. Really, my idea for these episodes is kind of like uh, something you just put on in the background. You don't necessarily need to watch. You can kind of glance at. But like I do, I like to listen to stuff. So I listen to podcasts, audio books. I don't tend to watch videos so much when I'm modelling. Uh, you know, that's more when I'm in front of the TV. So that's the idea behind these. Hopefully that's, uh, that's the way it's playing out and you're enjoying what you're seeing. So as always, thanks for uh, the continued support, thanks for watching, subscribing to the channel and just being a part of this great community. So this is the end of episode two. Um, we may even have a start on one of these, not promising anything, as we go through the rest of these episodes. So obviously bring that back and, um, and show you. But uh, until the next time, which will be Tuesday for um, episode three. So next Tuesday, it always goes out on a Tuesday. Stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Give the video a like. Let me know your comments below and do share any of your work as well. You can post links there. You can't really add photos, but you can post links to any of your works. So if you've done it on Facebook, you've got blogs, you've got internet sites where you've added stuff, you'll feel free let's see it down below uh, your thoughts on short run kits i'd like to know your sort of best and worst short run kit as well if you had a kit that sort of in the past nearly broken you but you got through it and in the end you, you're actually very happy with it that certainly for me was the um the bf 109 d conversion that i did with a resin nose uh, in one foot second it was a tough kit i wasn't ready for it but i got through it and i was happy to have done it so thanks everyone and i'll see you in the next video